7K to 4K 60, it'll say stabilization not supported. You go back, you go back in, hyper smooth. It's a bug. Hello folks, and welcome to NetCruiser Tech. Today I want to talk to you about the GoPro Hero 7 Black. Now this is my first GoPro and I'm getting used to the settings in the menu and how to get the most out of it. So I've been using it for three days now and I just want to go over the menu system and the tweaks that I've done to get better footage out of my GoPro. So immediately, uh, this is the shutter button. Power button is here on the side. Press and hold the power button for two or three seconds and the camera will power on. When the camera's on, you'll get an indicator on the front showing what resolution you're in, how many minutes you can record for, as well as your battery level. Now when we get into the menu system, it starts up defaulted into video mode. And if you want to start a video, all you have to do is press the shutter button and you will start your video. Press the shutter button to stop your video. I've put the menu back to most of the default settings, which is in my opinion, a not great out of box experience. They set it to 1440 by 30 frames a second wide field of view. So if you, if you just tap on this button here, this is a new menu interface that they've designed. It's been redesigned. If you want to change your resolution or your frames per second, you click on here, wide field of view is here, low light on or off, stabilization on or off, and ProTune on or off. Currently, ProTune is off. The, I set this to what it's like when you get it out of the box. If you want to change your resolution, press on the resolution area, and here you can scrub between your uh, 1440, 2.7K, 4K, all of your different modes. Out of box, it's set to a four by three aspect ratio, which is typical like old style TVs, four by three. A lot of times, for video, you're going to want to change this to 16 by 9. So you notice when you go to 16 by 9, that changes the 1440 down to 1080. Because the 1440 is 1080p, but just higher. So, it so it's, it's still 1920 by 1440 is what it becomes instead of 1920 by 1080. In 4K, you can shoot 4K 60 frames a second with hyper smooth, which is awesome. When you want to change your frame rates, click on the frame rate side and you can scrub. If you choose a too high of a frame rate, it will say it's not supported and it won't let you choose that. So we'll go back. Field of view, when you're in field of view, in this setting, I only have wide. So this is where the menu is a little bit annoying to me because I wish I could have field of view over here when I'm choosing this stuff. So if I want 4K 60, 16 by nine, I can only have a wide field of view. If I jump over to 2.7K 60 and then back out and go to field view, in 2.7K I have all three choices which are available, which is linear, wide, and super view. Now you can even get super view in 16 by nine, which is, it takes the 4x3 crop and then modifies, modifies the edge. So it's a very distorted view in super view, but it gets the most into the frame. And then you can preview what you want by just swiping through. And when you do scroll, if I scroll to that and then swipe back, it doesn't remember. You have to go in here, click it, wait till it turns blue, and then it takes you out. Low light, I leave on auto. Stabilization, I leave on auto because it's only auto on or off. There is no hyper smooth or normal in here. The camera decides that on its own. When you're looking at the resolution type, it'll tell you if it supports hyper smooth. If I take 2.7K and change this up to 120 frames a second, it says stabilization not supported. If I go down to 60, it's got hyper smooth. There are some situations where there's the old type of stabilization. I believe it's at 1080. If I go to 1080 and change this to 120, we get standard stabilization. What if I don't want hyper smooth? If I want just a normal stabilization, that is not a choice. There is no option. If, if the camera is in a mode that supports hyper smooth, that is what you get. You can either only have hyper smooth as stabilization on or turn stabilization off completely. Handheld stability test, 4K60. And carry it down the stairs. Hyper smooth on. Stabilization is off. There's also a little bit of a bug here where if I switch over to 4K, it says stabilization not supported. 
I've noticed this a few times. If I jump from 2.7K to 4K60, it'll say stabilization not supported. You go back, you go back in, hyper smooth. It's a bug. I'm running firmware 1.5.1, which is the first update out of the box uh, that you have to apply in order to get hyper smooth at 4K60. So that's just a menu uh, related problem that they haven't fixed. All right, now when you're in your video settings, the biggest one that's turned off that I think should always be turned on for almost anyone is Protune. Protune is off by default. Protune gives you a lot more controls once you turn it on. Protune also increases the bitrate. But when Protune is off, you're getting less of a bitrate. What happened? That was interesting. So if I jump back into the menu, with Protune on, now we have additional settings here. We have a shutter setting, EV compensation, white balance, ISO minimum and ISO maximum. That is excellent for if you wanna be able to control the lighting. Sharpness, I believe was set for default high, but you have high, medium and, and uh, well you only have high, yeah, you have high, medium, low of sharpness. I'm currently trying it out on high just to see what that's like. Some people say it's over sharpened, but I'm giving it a try. For color, we have GoPro profile, which gives you additional uh, saturation, and it does look like it does when ProTune is off. 4K60, ProTune on, GoPro color profile, max ISO 1600. You just get a higher bit rate, but the same color, or you can go flat. Flat is for when you want to uh, color grade yourself. 4K60, ProTune on, flat color profile everything will have a flat color and then you have to do it in post to make it look how you want to look. For me, I don't do color grading. I want color profile GoPro. Then we have raw audio settings. High is what I've been trying where it includes wind and our stereo automatic. Uh, medium is menu applies processing based on manual audio control. And then low is no uh, minimal and then off is no processing. So I've got it on high because high essentially is auto, full auto processing, including wind owner stereo and automatic gain as needed. Cause I don't have a windsock for this. So I'm trying it on high when I'm, when I'm outside. Outside video test, 4K, 60 frames a second, pro tune, GoPro color profile, wide. So this gives you a higher bit rate. And I wanted to see how does this look for outside vlogging. And see how distorted does the car look? A little bit. 2.7K, 60 frames a second, Pro Tune, GoPro color profile, linear field of view. I want to see how does this handle the lightness to darkness changes for outside? How does it handle the wind with high audio processing? Walk from light to shadow. How does it look with the car? The car looks normal, which is good. I'm a big fan of linear, but I'm curious to go in and see what this looks like now. Microphones, you can have them on auto. Wind puts it into a mono type wind reduction mode, or a stereo gives you a stereo effect. Have it on auto. I've just been trying it on auto for now. If you change stuff in your ProTune settings that you don't like and you can and you don't want them anymore, you can reset it. But in my opinion, always turn ProTune on. It, there's almost no downside to having it on. Uh, everything is is worthwhile. When it comes to the menu system, you'll notice here that when you're in some of the menus, there is no back button. When there's no back button, you have to swipe back. But when you're in a menu that has a back button, if you try and swipe back, it doesn't work. So that's a little bit of an inconsistency. So when you see a back button, always press it. When we're on the home button, you have things here. You have a zoom, you have your settings, you have your camera, you have quick clips, your how much capacity is left on your card and what mode you're in, which is video. If you click on the zoom slider, you can do a digital zoom, but it, but like my old action camera, which was a Sony, you can only zoom when you're not recording. You cannot resume when you're recording. So all you can do is you can digitally zoom into your shot and then start recording. You cannot zoom. Okay, GoPro stop recording. Now from this main menu, if I click this down here, this is video or loop mode. We want it on video. This here is quick clips. So 30 seconds, 16 second clips or, or unlimited. I keep it on unlimited. This, or if you click in the center, all your controls go away. Click in the center to bring them back. 
If you click at the bottom, this brings you into your video settings. If you swipe down from the top, this gives you into your preference settings. This one is voice control, this one is beep, this one is the quick clips on or off, and this one is lock to screen. Uh, starting from this one, you would want to lock the screen if you're working in a wet environment. So if there's something like uh, like in underwater, you want it to uh, activating the screen. The this one, the quick capture, I don't quite understand because if quick capture is on and I go back, it doesn't show it here that quick capture is on. I would still have to be able to set my thing. So I, I don't know if that's a bug or that's something I don't understand. Beep on or off is just a quick toggle for beep off, beep on or off. Although I have noticed a bug with this where if beeps are on or, on or off, sometimes I have my beep set to low, every now and then it'll reset to high. And then this one toggles voice controls on and off. Up here is showing me that I'm not connected to the cloud or a GoPro Plus. I'm not connected to my phone because it's grayed out and I'm not connected to GPS. Uh, although I, the phone connection, I do have Wi-Fi turned on or Bluetooth turned on for the phone. I just don't have the app connected right now. If you click on preferences, this gets us all into the preferences of the camera. In connections, we have wireless, which is set to on. You can connect your device. You can get your camera info from there. Under general, we have beep volume, which I just did re get reset to high. I always like this on low, but when you toggle it on and off from that button up at the top, I've noticed that in beep volume, sometimes it'll get reset to high, so I set it back on low. Default mode is what mode it turns on to. Auto power is what, how long it's going to wait before the camera turns off. LEDs, if you want all the camera... In general, you can have all of your LEDs on or off. Video compression, H.264 and HEVC. Here you can choose if you want to have all of your clips recorded in a high efficiency video codec. If you do that, there is some limitations where you cannot play it back on older devices. So I have it set for compatibility mode. And then if you're in a mode like 4K60, 4K60 is only supported in HEVC and that's what it records in. Then we have time and date and, and date format. So scroll back. Click back next. Under voice control, the camera does have voice control and it works pretty well. I've had to turn it off because as I've been recording this video, it's been activating. So I have it off right now, but wake on, you can have it set to turn on. And then here's all the commands so that you can say capture, stop capture, which starts a video, start recording, stop recording, which starts video, highlight, which tags a, an item in the video that is action, the way you can go back and find it better. Take a photo, shoot burst, start time lapse, start time lapse, video mode, photo mode, burst mode, turn off, and turn on. Those are all the things you can do by voice. And that is handy. I do like that. But be warned that people can troll you. It's not trained to your voice. If you have voice control on, anyone can then say GoPro turn off and screw you over. Or they can say GoPro stop recording and it would stop your video. So be aware of that. Make sure you're not around someone that's going to mess with you if you have voice control on. There's also touch display. You can have the landscape lock on or off because this camera does work in landscape mode. When, how long you want the screen saver and your screen brightness. Regional is where you find your GPS settings. I have GPS off because I don't need to have my, my geolocation tagged, but it's under regional language and video format and then regulatory information. Input and output is where if you plug in the micro HDMI cable, how does it function? So by default, it's on media. You can have it set on monitor, which is shows monitor with the overlay, or you can have it on live, which is video out, no, no overlay, so no menus. Default is media. And then audio input is not available right now. About is about my camera. It's going to show the serial number and stuff, so I'm not going to show that, but it shows you the serial number and the firmware, and then you can reset all of your settings. So we'll go back, and there's a couple more things I want to show you in here. Things that trip me up. So if you want to switch between photo mode and video mode, you can either just press the button, which will shoot you through your settings, photo, time lapse. I'm pressing the power button on the side, quick pressing it. We'll swap you between photo, video, and time lapse modes, or you can swipe. 
Now it took me a couple days to figure this out. How do I play back videos that I've taken? I have recorded a lot of video on this GoPro and where the heck is the playback? Cause there's no playback mode here. There's no playback option. To get into playback mode, swipe up from the bottom. Now you're in your gallery view and it immediately starts playing your last clip. So you have to stop that and then you hit the boxes up at the top here, it lets you get into your gallery view. Here's your volume, here's your gallery view, you can delete the clip, you can change the speed of the clip, you can scrub through the clip and you can highlight the clip. So if we click here, here's a bunch of clips that I've already recorded. If we go to a video, this indicates that I have an action tag spot, so I click here and I can play, start playing back this video. This is a 4K 60 video clip that struggles to play on my computer, but it works fine playing on the GoPro, 4K 60, high efficiency video codec. If I click on the scrubber, this brings a way for me to scrub through the video. And then it, here was an action spot that I chose that indicated that there was action coming up right here. Here changes your slow-mo on or off. If you're shooting in a high frame rate, here you can delete the clip and there you can tag it. When you wanna get out of this mode, you have to swipe down from the top. Another thing I've noticed in playback mode that might be missing, there used to be a way that you could quick clip where you could edit a 30 second video out of your playback as well as take a picture. And I think that is gone from this new interface. If you want to select clips to delete, hit the media button. Here's all of your clips. When you want to clear off your memory card, you can click this button and you can start selecting them. If you select all of them, you could delete them all in one batch. That I like. I'm a fairly technology savvy person and it took me a while to figure out that you can actually play back media and manage media on the GoPro. Alright guys, so somehow we've got back to 1440-60. We want to be 2K60, uh, 16 by 9 linear. Oh, right. The other thing I wanted to mention, when you get settings that you like, something like this, 2.7K, 60 frames a second linear, I really like this setup. If I'm recording this way, and then I get into a situation where I want to jump to 4K footage, I click this, I go to 4K, I'm in 4K 60, it defaults back to wide because that's all the, all, the only thing you can do. When I jump back to 2.7K, it does not remember the field of view that it was at. I, GoPro, please make that where it has a memory of whatever field of view that I had set one of these resolutions to. When I jump back to that resolution, I want it to remember that when, I'm on, when I choose 2.7K that I like linear. I really wish it would do that. Now there is a quick way for you to verify down at the bottom when you see 2.7K 60 frames a second and the L, the L indicates linear. So when you click on that, I can quickly change that. If I see wide or super view, then when I'm about to go back and record, when I see an S, I know I'm in super view. When you're on the front as well, you also get an indication of what your field of view is. All right guys, so that's the GoPro Hero 7 Black. A quick look at the menus and my recommended uh, configurations. Turn on ProTune, up the resolution, set it to 60 frames a second, and learn how to use the camera. And set your field of view to how you like it. All right guys, if you enjoyed this, hit that like button. If you're new around here, subscribe. If you wanna to talk to me, leave a comment down below. And as always, thanks for watching.